So this lesson, we're going to be concluding our build of our slide presentation generated from content within a sheet. And in the last lesson, we saw how we can create the slides and drop it into the folder. I'm going to delete these and also close that one. So we're using the slides, we're generating a slide presentation, and then we're updating some of the content within each one of the slides. And that is coming from how many rows we have here within the spreadsheet. So now let's go back into the application where we left off. So where we're setting the background as we're looping through each piece of data that's contained within the spreadsheet, and we're appending a new slide and using the selected background layer layout. Let's now select the page elements. So page elements. And for the page elements, of the slide. We need to select it from the new slide and get the page elements. So it's going to return back the page element of each one of them. And in this case, we know that there's only going to be two because we know from the default that the first one is going to be the title and the second one is the subtitle. So there's actually no need to loop through them where we're just selecting the page elements. And with the page elements, selecting it by the index value. So the first one is going to be the main title. So we select it as a shape and selecting it as a shape allows us to get the text. And then the text within the shape, once we've selected it, we can set the text value. And this we can use the row value. And this is also an array. So we've got multiple items there and we want to get the first item within that row. So that's going to be the title. And then the second one with the index value of two is going to be the second one. So let's uh, do a quick function to test out, test data, so that we can see the data that's coming in. We're going to get the data from the spreadsheet using the same function. And we're, this time we're just going to log out the row details in the log so that we can see the data that's coming in from the row one and with an index value of row two. To make sure it's working before we try to run it and we create a brand new sheet. So run the test data and just see if it's working. So it does look like we're able to get the data back. So welcome one and slide one. So that format does work. So we're setting the text value and setting the second text value. So the second element is going to be the second value that we're setting. And now let's run it and see if we create our slides from the from the spreadsheet and run the slide maker function. And we'll go over to the drive, let it run through. So it's presenting all the information that we have from the spreadsheet. And then now let's open up the slides. And we see we've got all of the content and this content was coming from our spreadsheet and we've populated and generated the slides presentation. Uh, also the first slide there, we should remove that first slide because we don't have any content in there or if you want, you can just leave that in. Uh, so let's wrap this up and we'll just remove the first slide. So within the function, remove first, we'll pass in, we'll create another test function to simulate this one. And then we can run the function remove first, pass in the slide presentation that we want to remove from and allow us to remove out the first slide from that presentation. So creating a function test remove. And usually I do like to take and create these test functions uh, as it does make it easier to run the code and avoid any issues that I might be having. So I want to select the slide presentation. 
So selecting the presentation using the slides app, open by ID, and I need the ID of this presentation. I just want to remove out whatever the first slide is. So selecting and create the ID. And open by ID. So we'll open it by ID. And then for the presentation, so we need to list out the, we can list out the slides. So just do a plural there and take the presentation. Get slides. So it's going to get the slides in an array. And we know we want to move out, remove out the first one. So let's uh, run our remove first. And we're going to pass in the presentation object here. And within the remove first, let's uh, just log out the slides just to make sure that we have slides there. And then within here, make sure we pass in the one argument there. So that will remove the underline for remove first. So let's do a test remove and see what happens. So we list out all of the slides that we have. And let's uh, take the slides with an index value of zero, and then we will just remove that function, remove that slide object. So that removed out the first item. And we can use the same thing here when we get the layouts. We can just remove out whatever the first one is that we have for the layouts. When we get the slides, So let's select and use the function of remove the first one, remove first. And that's going to correspond to the slide app presentation. And we're just going to remove the first one from the slide app presentation. So it looks like we're ready to try this again. So let's run the slide maker and see what happens. So I'll remove out the old one. And now if I open it up, our first slide should be removed. And we've generated all of the slide content and that's all coming from the spreadsheet. So try it out and also update some of the fields. You can select some of the different slide layouts if you want. You can create your own slide layouts. and generate some slide presentations from your spreadsheets. This is going to be a quick overview of the SlidesApp service and the SlidesApp classes that we've looked at in the previous lessons. So within the Slides app, there's a lot of different methods that are available. So there's a lot of classes and each one of those classes has a lot of methods as well. So with Slides as well, you can run and create a bound script, so it's just a script and going into the script editor. So that gives you an opportunity to, to interact with the UI as well as access and access the live presentation and get the selection. There's also, of course, you can do it with a standalone script. And there are some advantages to doing it within the bound script. So that really gives you an opportunity to interact with selected content and update what you do and what the user can do within their slides and I'll just give this one a name of test. So we saw that when we create functions, uh, we can set up our slides. So the first parent object is gonna be the presentation. And within the presentation, we would use the slide app and we can get the active presentation. So that's what we can do for the bound script. And then within the presentation itself, we've got a lot of options so within the presentation class, you can see the drop down where you can set and you can get layouts, you can get masters, you can get the name of the presentation and you can work with the notes. So adding notes to the pages, so getting the notes. Uh, also setting the name, you can get the URL. So these are all the top level methods that are available within the presentation. So if we were to create and get a new slide, that was another option that we had in creating a slide. So we could use the presentation and then append a slide. And then that slide then is going to be returned back as the slide class. And from there, we've got a, another set of methods that we can use. 
So let's run the my function and see what we get back within the execution log. So first at the top level, we get the presentation. And within the presentation object, we need to also accept permissions as we're updating the document now. So let's uh, provide and accept the permissions. So first we get the presentation class, then we've got the slide class. And then each one of these classes, they've got a bunch of methods that you can use. So this, uh, if we want to get the text range, we can select from the slide object and we can get the page elements And this will return back a listing of all the page elements. And I should do the text range after. So first we'll do page elements and returning back a listing of all the page elements. And then we'll loop through those. So within the logger log, we got the page elements object. And then within each one of these. So for the page elements, this is returning back an array. So we can use a JavaScript method for each to return back the element object. And within the element object, we'll list out the elements individually. And then this is where we can select from the element the additional content, such as the text that's contained within it. So getting the element object as a shape, using the as shape, and this allows us to get the text that's contained within it. And we can also then set the text and add some text to that element. So looping through all of the page elements that we just created and then selecting and updating some text in there. So let's try to run this function. And presentation slides. So we don't have any page elements yet. Uh, so let's... Uh, so if we already had page elements, we don't have any page elements, then we could select them and get the shape and add text. But since we don't have any page elements, we have to insert a page element. So let's take and select from the slides and insert a page element. So within the slide, we're gonna insert a text box and then within the text box, we'll write the word test. So it's gonna insert that text box and then we'll select the page elements and then we can update those page elements. So we need to have a page element first and then we can update and get the text range. And let's output the text range of that particular element. Run the function again. So now we've got a page element and that page element gets returned back within the array. So now that we've created the page element, when we get the page elements, we get it returned back within an array and we can out log out the element object. So we only have the one page element. So we're logging out the element and it's being logged out as a page element. And then also we're getting the text range that's contained within that page element and we're setting it to test and I think we already started out with test. So let's make one update to this. So there's our page element that we've set and we've created. And also if we want to insert a text box, so I'll just create a variable for text box. And because we've inserted this text element, we can select it as an object. Uh, so that means that we can set where we're positioning it so we can set the content alignment. So let's set the content alignment to slides app and then select the content alignment enum and let's set it to the top and save and run the function. And that's created a brand new slide. It's updated the words within the slide, updated the shape text information of the slide. So as long as you've got the class selected, the classes all have different methods. So you can also move between different types of classes. So in this case, when we use the as shape, 
So we're taking that selected element and getting the text range of the element by selecting it and forcing it to be a shape. And then for the shape, we can get text. We can set the text as well once we get the text from the element. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Always happy to hear from you. And with the Google Slides, there's really a lot of different options and different classes that are available. I do suggest that you try it out within a function like this to experiment and see what different elements and different objects you can select and then make updates and manipulations to those objects. And also create some test functions in order to... Yeah, and this is really one of those Google Workspace services that has a lot of options. So it is worthwhile to take the time and just create some experiment functions and try the code and run the code in order to make the selections. And also take the project that we've worked on and the source code that we've provided in the earlier lessons and try it out, customize it, and see what you can make happen with Slides, Slides app and the slide service.